Hi everyone, Elliot Jacobson here for Climate Casino, and I'm going to tell you my top 12 list of what is going to go wrong in the world in the year 2023. Uh, yeah, 2022 was a pretty tough year if you were paying attention to the floods and fires and droughts and dried up rivers and Pakistan underwater and all the other things with the pandemic and uh, financial collapse. Well, that was um, quite a year, right, that we just put behind us. And now we are going into 2023. So let me just share with you what I think, if I'm going to make some predictions, are my top 12 predictions for the year 2023. We're talking about climate casino predictions, but I don't have odds for all of these quite yet. The first one is a return of El Nino. Right now, there is a 50-50 chance that we're going to see El Nino return in the uh, late fall, September round then. And what's going to happen as a result of El Nino, this is number two, is that we are going to have more heat waves, more drought, and more fire. So the last three years, we've had all of this incoming solar radiation being absorbed by the ocean, but we aren't seeing the full effect of that because there's some cool waters that have been uh, sort of containing that heat content that we've been uh, gaining in our oceans. So what's going to happen as the El Nino comes later this year is we are going to see that heat released into the atmosphere. So what that in practice means is that we may just see the hottest year ever recorded uh, for humans, essentially humans have been on this planet. We're going to be probably at least 1.3 degrees Celsius, about 2 degrees Fahrenheit, above the 1850 to 1900 baseline. So it is going to be really hot. And that heat causes all these other phenomena, um, the fires and, and some of the droughts, uh, things drying up. But on the other hand, the other side of El Nino is that there's a lot more water vapor uh, being injected into the atmosphere. So we're going to see much stronger storms and floods and all of these um, behaviors that we've seen in over parts of the world where uh, entire parts are wiped out by uh, a flood of historic proportion, right? A one in 800 year flood seems to be happening about two or three times uh, a year now. So yeah, we're going to have a lot of that in 2023. Now, one of the things you might not have thought um, is directly connected to these things is that we're going to have more earthquakes and possibly more volcanic eruptions. And this is something called isostatic rebound. So essentially, as the weight of the ice that's melting um, decreases the, the total gravitational force on certain key parts of the planet, right, that allows the land to rise up. This is isostatic rebound and that destabilizes faults. And this is especially um, prevalent in areas that are losing ice and also have volcanic activity. Now, with all of this stuff going on, we're going to see, of course, a lot more crop failures and famine. You cannot water crops if there's no water. You don't know exactly what to plant because we're not sure what the climate's going to be this coming summer. So um, there's parts of the world right now, for example, Somalia and the Horn of Africa that are just entering their sixth year of extreme drought and famine. So expect a lot more famine um, to be going on this coming year. Now, another thing that's going on right at this very moment and is likely to continue is record low global sea ice. So if you were to sort of add up all of the sea ice all over the planet, Antarctic, Arctic, and anywhere you can count it up, and you were to uh, create, say, how much do we have all together? What's the current area of all of that? At this particular moment here on this day, that is at a record low. So record low sea ice um, area. Well, what does that mean? It means that there is more open ocean that can absorb even more heat, heating the planet up even faster. Now, this is especially the case in the Antarctic this year where we're hitting these record lows, but there is a good chance that the Arctic may see an all-time record low as well later on in the year. And of course, 2023, you might think that the pandemic is over, but we are now in a multiple pandemic situation, not just all the COVID variants, but we have diseases like cholera and strep and just um, the flu, the simple flu and RSV and all these different diseases um, that are getting more virile as sort of the temperatures adjust around the planet and they have more locations they can survive sort of out in the open and the transmissibility becomes easier because we are no longer wearing masks and we're congregating in large groups and of course what's going on in china right now 
the fact that they are no longer um, keeping people locked up, that they are no longer even testing for COVID. So all sorts of, they're expecting as of today, um, they're expecting about between one and two million new cases a day in China. It might even be more than that. So uh, I think the pr latest prediction I read was 800 million total cases in China. So we can expect as a result of all of these um, diseases going around that there's going to be more supply chain dis disruptions. So if China is really going to escalate to that level of uh, viral infection, then certainly supply chains are going to become challenged once again in 2023. And also related to that is infrastructure collapse. So while we have these storms and these different heat waves and, and events take place, we're likely to see infrastructure, buildings and roads and all these things become more challenged to do what, what we originally built them to do. And of course, we won't know how to build it back because uh, the climate is going to be getting more severe over the years. And so just the logistics of building something that can withstand some unknown future um, climatic effect makes it even more of a challenge to uh, keep our infrastructure going. All right, well, with all of this, we can take a turn and actually ask, well, what species are gonna be challenged? Well, the main uh, species that, that really struggles with this are the insects, right? Insects have these die-offs when uh, essentially, if they don't have just the right conditions to, uh, where they're living, they're gonna, um, you know, you can't have uh, bees where there's no plants for them to get the pollen, right? So. Um, we can expect widespread insect die-offs. And of course, once you don't have insects, then you don't have uh, food for the birds and so on up the food chain. So um, we should expect just any number of species extinctions in 2023. Now, probably not a whole lot of the megafauna, um, but at the insect level and, um, you know, in, in diverse ecosystems that are getting really severely degraded, we should see uh, roughly 10 times the background rate of extinctions in 2023. Humans will not be among them, nor will elephants or koalas or polar bears, but all of those will have their challenges in the near future. So, okay, everybody, that is my list. That is my short prediction list for the year 2023. And I sure hope that um, no matter what goes on, in the next year that you do your best to find ways to be of service, to be generous, and to be kind. Right, everyone. Sally Jacobson. See you later.